is going to star in a standalone movie. We don't start filming that movie until January. And frankly, I don't want you to have to hear me talk about it much longer. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of Black Panther, Ryan Coogler. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I, I grew up, um, I grew up very into pop culture, man. Uh, very into comic books, um, you know. Uh, so, so, so it's something that 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 is just as just as personal to me as, as the last couple of films I was able to make. So, you know, I feel really fortunate to be able to work on something that, uh, that I'm this passionate about. It was great, man. But at the same time, it's a lot of work to do. You know what I mean? A lot to live up to. You know, <laughs> don't want to disappoint. You know, you want to make something like that. Uh, that, that, that keeps, keeps, keeps moving the ball forward. Ryan is an extraordinary director. He really is, uh, he creates a, a beautiful vibe on set and a, and a really free, sort of liberated, kind of uh, explorative, uh, always, always refining after every single take, always, you know, nudging it here and there and inspiring you to try different things. He'd, he'd have, you know, very, personal sessions with you, just you about your character and reading your parts in the script and go, you know, how do you feel about that? Do you feel like this is organic and this is real? And you could literally say, yeah, I think it would be like this. And there were opportunities and times when the script changed, you know what I mean? As a result of your collaborative input. We had two weeks of uh, before we started shooting with just the cast and Ryan and sitting down with all the different um, partnerships within the film. And, and getting to know each other and talking about the relationship and talking about the script and talking about what's more and the themes and everything so everyone was on the same page in terms of what the mission was with this film you, you look at the world that you're you're living in and you try to do something that um elevates story that that rises to the moment uh and i think you know with panther that's something we we certainly try to do i think it's a uh, kind of an historic opportunity uh, to, to do something really special. With everything that's going on in terms of uh, uh, people kind of asserting their uh, empowerment of who they are as African Americans in, the, in our country and around the world, I think it's a, I think it's a, great, a great time for the movie. Okay. Sitting down with Marvel and they will then look like, okay, I present to them like, here's, here's what I'm presenting to you today for this X, Y, and Z. And we all kind of sit around and they would critique it. Um, and make notes and tell me like, you know, this is what we're feeling, this is what we're not feeling. And then I go back to the drawing board. As far as that is, though, I kind of said, hey, surprise, here's this. And there are some surprises. And they were so fantastic to be like, you know what? Yeah. It's different than, more different than anything we've done at Marvel. So they were on board for that, which was really fantastic. Like the technological like whiz of Wakanda. She designs all the new technology. She's she's a scientist. Um, she was like a dream role to play, you know, inspirational, innovative, just a, a strong black woman. And, um, <laughs> Play Zuri. He's a, he's the spiritual leader of Wakanda. He has a really close relationship with T'Challa or the Black Panther. The Black Panther is somewhat of a like, like almost like a son. I grew up loving comic books, and it didn't matter what what color the comic the comic book character was. I would follow X Men. I follow Spider Man. You know, um, but, but I remember as I got older, you know, I wanted to find a, a comic book character who looked like I did. And I remember going into the comic book shop and asking if they if they had any. You know, in the first, the first one that the comic book owner took me over to see was Black Panther. How can I be down? When I had first read the Black Panther comics, it was like early 2000s, and Reggie Hudlin had actually written a series. Right. I was like, this is fascinating. And so I collected all these books, 
And friends would ask me, do you read comics? I'm like, not all into comics, but I read this Black Panther series. This was like 2006, a friend of mine was like, you should get the rights, dude. So when they do the movie, like you can be a part of it. I was like, man, they ain't gonna do no black superhero movie. So 10 years later, it's happened. The best way to kind of describe him and T'Challa's relationship is like Magneto and Professor X. Oh, nice. And um, I feel like, you know, he's, he's a smart, very, very smart guy. He's extremely intelligent. He, uh, he's patient. Um, and he has a by any means necessary kind of attitude. And he has a different opinion on how Wakanda should be ran. Right. And, uh, and he has his eyes on the throne. And he's willing to do whatever it takes to get there. So I think that's kind of Killmonger in a nutshell. Mbaku is this young, charismatic, you know, ferocious. Majestic. Charismatic, beloved leader. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, leader of the Jabari tribe, the best tribe in Wakanda. All right, all right. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 this is my time. Oh. And the Jabari tribe are one of Wakanda's main tribes. They don't believe in the importance of, you know, the, the metal. As a result, have kind of removed themselves from the mainstream culture and that kind of puts them at odds a little bit with the rest of Wakanda. Ulysses is, uh, he's a wheeler dealer, he's, uh, he's uh, a lone wolf, but he can pick up the phone to any government and compromise them. And uh, yeah, so he'd fit in pretty well in today's society, really. Um, um, it's, it's, it was... He is um, very, very driven by this sense of wanting to uncover what he sees as the hypocrisy of Wakanda, and uh, also this ties in with his obsession with with for vibranium, and also his way of working as a mercenary and a, an arms dealer around the world. Um, he knows how to manipulate, and he. Say that Ulysses really, I think, believes that Wakanda is a boy in the first mm -hmm. place. Yeah, because he'll pretend this pretense in there. And Ulysses, is, one thing he is, he doesn't like hypocrisy, and he sees he sees certain things about Wakanda as being. He's trying to, you know, yeah, that drives him. That's what that drives him. So it's, so it's absolutely crazy to be looking at my people from this view. You know what I mean? 7,000 people that just want you to succeed. They want you know, they want what you show them to be awesome. You know what I mean? And and, and that's, that's, why they, that's why they're there. That's why they camp out. That's why they show up. You know, there's no cynicism there. And, and, and that, that part of it is, you know, it's, it's emotionally overwhelming, man. And, and it makes this place so special, right, you know? Come on, Pete. Rap it. Rap it. Paul H, baby, up in it, a black family, love it.